we focus on performance. We have to understand that it's good to show cash flow, but we also want to make sure that property goes up in value. Our history is what allows us to have repeat business with clients. Since the GFC, a couple of quick points I'll push through. We got into Cameron Park, identified it as a growth suburb. We turned 350 into 480 in a couple of years. It's $130,000 upside. Importantly, we've got $118 a week positive cash flow. There's no, there's no NRAS on this. There's no bells and whistles. This is simply good research, picking the right areas, getting the good returns. Bonnie Rig is a suburb in Sydney, which people would have gone out to and gone, oh, there is a thousand public houses out here. It was a public housing enclave. People saw that, didn't buy. We knew that it was all being bulldozed. So we got in there comfortably at $395,000. we are now $100,000 plus better off and with positive cash flow. The Ponds, Northern Sydney, we got in for just over a half a million dollars. A couple of years on, we're at $665,000. These are in markets where people have said, oh, look, we're properties in a bubble. We're not going to get good returns. You do your research, you'll get a good return. Fletcher. One of our clients got in here, he was a finance broker, he paid $409,000. On completion, he said, what's it worth? We said, you're the broker, go to the bank, get it revalued. Came back at 510000 bucks. Important thing here is 530 bucks a week in rent on a purchase price of $409,000. When we went to the local agent and had a, a market appraisal on the rent, they said, oh, 409000 that should get you 430 I said, well, why? Oh, look, that's the, that's the ceiling on rents here, around 430 We asked, how many four-bedroom properties do you have available in the suburb? And they came back and said, look, we've, we've got none. Like, they're really sought after. So we just went, look, okay, mate, let's take it to the next level. If you have a sought-after product, put a price on it. We put the price of 530 on that asset, and we were scoffed at. It took seven days and we had it rented at 530 bucks a week. So at every stage, we're going to make sure you get the best cash flow possible and the best growth. Townsville was the first NRAS asset we got into. Again, this took a lot of negotiation because initially we were being offered properties at $450,000. We said no can do and we eventually got the developer to give us the land we had local builders build, and they built four bedroom, 220 square meter homes for $400,000. We've only had those rented for a year. Growth is, uh, is consistent, but we're seeing income of 150 bucks a week, positive uh, cash flow out of these assets. With infrastructure changes going through Townsville right now, I dare say in two years' time, we'll be looking at a potential exit point on those projects, and I'd hope to sell them for into the fives. The only other asset in Sydney was Edmondson Park that we got NRAS onto. In this case, we paid a half a million dollars back in 2011. Half, that was the $17,000 government rebate that I mentioned that we were aware of, many people weren't. So in this case, the client bought a block of dirt. He got $17,000 from the government. He paid no stamp duty because there was a stamp duty exemption in New South Wales at that point in time. That asset has been revalued this year at $610,000 and it's generating him $206 a week positive cash flow. The client that owns that asset has been aggressive. He's up to his 14th property. It's generating positive cash flow in excess of $120,000 a year for him across his portfolio. Uh, he's de-risked or he's mitigated his risk through NRAS incentives, which is exactly what uh, we want to focus on. Whilst well, this client has made good money already, the recommendation is to hold these assets until such time as the South West Rail Link is completed down in Western Sydney, by which time, say 2016, there will be two train stations within three or four kilometres of this asset. I would expect that $610,000 to be into the 700s at that point, which means the, the client is going to do very, very well indeed. In regards to summarising off what we've focused on, the important thing is the fundamentals, okay? We don't want to just look at an asset and get caught up in the, uh, the incentives. We want to make sure that without the incentives, it still works. Secondly, 
we've got to understand that every one of these assets will be suitable for different people. Okay, so uh, don't assume that the four bedroom house with a double incentive is the best asset for you because it may not be. You might want to invest in your SMSF, which we can do, and that will potentially require a different structure. These assets are limited. There are going to be 50,000 potentially de delivered. They might not all go to the public. More than likely they won't. More and more have been delivered to housing authorities who will uh, build, rent and keep these assets. So it's important if you're interested, you, you act fairly quickly. I mentioned before, some of our clients have been buying within SMSFs. We're not going to give you the advice as to whether you should or you shouldn't. We're not a financial planner. We don't do that. We can tell you which assets suit and maybe we can work with your financial planner in terms of how you've structured uh, the, the purchase. You're now going to be redirected to a survey page where you can then engage in further questions with a consultant via either phone or email. We do look forward to talking to you soon. Appreciate your time. Thank you and goodbye.